Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for September 1st, 2020. So yesterday we had a little bit of a mixed bag of results. We had the Dow moving a little bit lower, still sitting in consolidation. We had the NASDAQ working higher, trying to make new record highs. We had the S&P 500 pushing up, but just struggling here a little bit at the end of the day. So what does that mean for today? Well, we have kind of a interesting morning um, setting up with a big day of uh, news reports on the economic calendar, a few earnings reports to make note of. So how about we just get started here, buckle up, settle in, and get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, looking at the markets, we have a mixed bag this morning. We have futures have been kind of floating around the flat um, area this morning. And um, at this very second, Dow futures have turned just a little bit lower. We had a an, an interesting close yesterday. I'm going to go to a 15-minute chart. And notice that at the end of the day yesterday, we had a pretty violent move overall. We shot up and then just reversed all the way back down, just ripped it out of the hands of the market. If we take a look, um, SPY, it was pretty much across the board where we tried to move higher. And then right at the end of the day, there was a heavy selling wave. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that means for this morning, but we're gonna wanna stay on our toes um in the market there could be um that potential of a little pullback happening but one of the things i want to remind everyone is that we are heading into a three-day weekend and although we have a big day of data ahead of us we could easily see the market starting to soften up a little bit here in volume it's already been really really soft on market breadth and we could see it begin by midweek to really soften up on that market volume um, as traders head out to really enjoy the three-day weekend, um, kind of add some vacation to it because it has been an historic August. Um, I think it. I think the tally was something one of the best August in eighty six years, so um, or best percent gain in eighty six years in August. So pretty remarkable. It would not be out of the question for um, the market to catch just a little bit of rest here. Um, in the coming days, and remember, September is typically one of the worst months of the market now i'm not expecting a terrible month just that we could get a little bit more resting a little bit more pulling back in this market as a possibility so let's take a look we're holding these support levels well we're holding trend very well as a matter of fact we could draw a trend right up here which puts us really really tight in that trend but we'll want to watch this pretty closely because right now our patterns remain very very bullish there's nothing here except that just a little bit of a pullback that suggests any kind of profit taking is underway here um, trends are very bullish our averages uh, moving averages technically are extremely bullish except for one thing and that is that we are a long ways away from our 50-day moving average. We have stretched this rally to an extreme and that possibility of that pullback kind of comes into play. Now, we have support areas that can support this price. If we start to pull back, we ha also have trend that could support this price. But we'll wanna watch that pretty closely because it really could be pretty painful pullback if those sellers start taking over. Watch that closely. My hope is we're going to just kind of drift sideways, that we're just gonna rest in here for uh, a week or so, just just relax a little bit, uh, move over to the trend. That gives us a better opportunity uh, for more upside move. Let's take a look at that SPY. Now, SPY was building really good at the end of the day. It looked like we were going to close confidently up here. Um, but boy, by the end of the day, really took a hit. 
pulled back. So we closed just marginally higher here on the day, hanging in there pretty well. Our trend held up extremely well. Our trend is very, very strong in the S&P 500. Keep a watch on this level of price support. That would be a place if we do decide to sell off where we might find some support. Unfortunately, if we came all the way back to there, that means we break our uptrend. So my hope is that we do a little bit more of just resting in here, kind of drifting sideways like we did right here. Just a little bit of rest, a little bit of consolidation as we move over to that trend. So certainly could be possible. We'll want to keep an eye on that. But it is undeniable that we are pretty strongly stretched to the upside here. And if those bears really start coming in, there could be a little bit of a painful move to the downside. I will say, though, if we do sell off, if we do get a little um, selling coming into the market, that that would actually be a healthy thing for the market, that we need a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a rest that will provide us cheaper prices uh, for entry and would be a good thing. So just kind of keep that in mind if that were to occur. It's not the end of the world. Let's take a look at the cues. Cues um, extremely stretched. Uh, new record highs here in the NASDAQ. We are so incredibly stretched up here to the upside. This was largely fueled by Apple and Amazon yesterday with their new um, shares being traded. Um, they popped on higher yesterday as people piled into those stocks. But keep an eye on this. We have um, extended this to an extreme extent up here and if we start getting some selling it really would not be a surprise now let's keep if we were to look at the same metric that we looked um, on the cues in the spot or uh, diamonds in the spy that if we were to just simply slide sideways over here notice that that's going to take a couple of weeks because we're so extended in this move um, a rest or pullback um, could be a little bit painful if that were to occur but let's keep in mind we have plenty of price support in this chart to catch it if that does occur so just keep that in mind we're a little bit stretched and heading into a three-day weekend it would not be all that surprising to see a little bit of profit taking let's take a look at IWM now IWM just really hasn't participated all that well here lately. Now we are still holding in a trend, but we're really, really close here where we're, we're gonna make a decision. Either we're gonna hold onto this trend or we're going to fail that trend. Let's watch that pretty closely and let's keep in mind that IWM is still dealing with a considerable level of price resistance here in the chart. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. If this were to fail, it could be one of those leading signals in the market of a little bit more of a profit taking move coming in. So watch that carefully if that were to occur. I'm not saying that it will. We could respond directly off of that trend right there and start taking off to the upside. We're going to need to see those financials and maybe oil sector stocks pick up to try and help them um, if it's going to move. But let's watch those closely um, in the market. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now, here's an interesting thing yesterday is as we were setting new record highs in the SPY, we also saw that VIX responding higher. So we have officially broken that downtrend here in the VIX, and we've pretty much proves that we are holding that as support. If that fear really starts coming in, guys, we could see that fear start to spark up um, because what would create that is everyone begin to panic about um, their positions and start taking profits and it could go really quickly if it does go. So interestingly enough, that VIX showing some strength yesterday, closing above a 26 handle seems unbelievable to me that we're looking at a 26 handle when we're looking at new record highs in the market at the same time but that's where we are if we take a look at those moving averages notice that we've retested that 50-day moving average so we could find price resistance right in this area 
between that 50 and 200. So it's entirely possible we pop up here just for a day or two and then pull right back. But let's keep an eye on that closely. Um, we don't wanna see that fear really spiking. That's where that real selling can come into play. And I gotta tell you, it really wouldn't be all that odd after so much buying to see some profit taking coming in. So let's watch that close. Let's take a look at T2101. And just real quickly on T2101, notice that we continue to show this decline in overall market breadth. If I were to add in um, Diamond Qs and SPY, on this chart, I want you to notice the massive divergence that we have going on in this chart. Um, market breadth continues to decline, the majority of stocks moving down or sideways while we continue to stretch these indexes higher. That is a little bit of a problem where we're gonna have to pay attention to that carefully if that starts to drift the other direction. So um, that, that breadth should not be moving as solidly lower as it is when we're climbing at this rate. Let's take a look at T2122, the four week new high, new low ratio. Now in this indicator, we're in pretty good shape in the sense that we've pulled back just below that mid range um, here in the chart, which means we have opened up a good opportunity for an upside. We've also opened up that possibility that we could drift into that downside. So keep a close eye on that. This is not giving us a direction today. It just says we're kind of in the middle of the zone. We'll want to pay attention to that carefully. And I suspect we might, we easily could stick, stick around this area for the next several days, um, assuming the news reports uh, don't move us a lot. And that's just because um, I got to believe trading floors are going to start clearing out here um, in the next couple of days as everyone heads out for a little bit of R&R &R after such an amazing August. So something to think about. Let's take a look at that um, economic calendar today. We do have some things on that economic calendar that are really, really important for us to pay attention to. And I want to make mention, guys, that um, if you go to the morning blog, I had a computer problem this morning. I wrote the morning blog, went to post it, lost everything, recreated what I could, but um, ran out of time. So if you go to the morning blog, there's not going to be much there this morning, and I apologize for that. Let's take a look here on this economic calendar. Notice that we have a PMI manufacturing number this morning. We have the ISM manufacturing number, which is the bigger of the numbers and the construction spending number comes out today. So a few things that could move us around in the market. Um, they could all be very positive. We could see a little bit of hangups in them. Let's watch them pretty closely. We also have a Fed speaker here later on today that we'll want to pay attention to. Keep in mind that as we move on through the week, we're going to hit that ADP report tomorrow. We have goods and services. We've got those jobless claims, productivity and costs. And then the big report this week is going to be on Friday and the employment situation number. Whether or not we get much price action around that, I don't know if we have markets kind of clearing out here for the long weekend. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar. In our earnings calendar today, we have just a few companies uh, reporting, not so many, but we do have some notables that we wanna pay attention to. So let me pull up, there we are. Um, what I've recreated for the blog anyway. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of these uh, BBW. Um, Build-A-Bear Workshop is reporting today. Um, $3 stock, hardly notable, but um, we're kind of winding down on that earnings season, so um, kind of sparingly in what we can find in here uh, for notable on the day. So Build-A-Bear Workshop, you can see right here at 3 bucks, that's going to report today. Holding up in a nice little pattern here, however, uh, but overall still downtrending in that chart, so we need a little, little firing up in here if that's going to come back around. Let's take a look at CAL. CAL, also a little tiny guy here, only about $7.80. Um, this has got a nice little downtrend in play, little double bottom um, support level pushing up. 
if that can hold in that earnings report might be something to pay attention to. Um, H&R Block, whoops. H&R Block is reporting today. Now this thing is, you know, in the age of um, all computer generated um, text returns and things like that, H&R Block has struggled quite a bit. Not a lot of folks going in, I guess, anymore and having them work on their taxes, but they do have their software um, that uh, to combat that, but we just aren't doing very good here in H&R Block. Let's watch this earnings report today, uh, whether or not this can start breaking that downtrend or moving back up. Uh, J-A-M-F. Another one of these little tiny guys that's reporting. Shouldn't have really put this on the list. This is a new issue, but something you might want to pay attention to. And um, SCVL, as you can see, we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel, looking for anything notable in those earnings reports. Don't expect these to move the market around much. Keep in mind, whoops, my tools changed on me. Keep in mind, we have that downtrend in this chart to try and break through. We had a good rally yesterday and it looks like we're perking up a little bit this morning. So could start to come back around here on the old shoe carnival. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. Also, if you can do me a favor, if you felt that this video was helpful, if you could please click that subscribe button, or excuse me, thumbs up button and leave a brief message, I would very much appreciate that. Um, helps us continue to grow. Thank you so much, guys. And although I haven't had the time here recently to answer a lot of those, I do read them all, and I am very thankful um, and truly appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that. It means the world to me. You guys are awesome. So with that, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. And remember, any of these stocks is not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. So we'll want to keep that in mind. Make sure you do your own due diligence on each and every one of these potential uh, trade ideas. Let's take a look at KMX. Now KMX is a chart that is really putting in an interesting pattern. Um, we've broken through some resistance up here. We've held very, very strong in this trend. And notice that in this little tight consolidation, this is a extremely tight consolidation. Nobody really wants to sell this yet. So what I'd be looking for as we uh, were getting really, really close to this trend, I would look for some kind of inspiration to see if that can perk up and move on through. Now it is entirely possible getting breaking through that 100 level that we have to consolidate this a little bit more. Let's keep an eye on KMX. And AAP is another one of those in that sector. Vance Auto, after breaking through some resistance here in the chart, notice we've had this nice little resting pullback this is essentially what we call a J-hook pattern, that potential of a J-hook pattern. If we can find that inspiration from the bulls to hook itself right on higher. So keep an eye on AAP also potentially setting up. Let's take a look at Procter & Gamble. P&G has enjoyed a tremendous run to the upside and a very, very tight price consolidation here over the last four days. This is something I call a pop out of the box. It's what we can draw a little teeny tiny tight box around this. And what I'm looking for, because we are already in a bullish trend, is I'm looking for that to slide over toward that trend and then find those buyers to push on through to extend on up. We can see very much this a similar type pattern right here where we went very quiet, very tight in a range right here until that candle pushed us into that next move. The pop out of the box pattern is one of my favorite and is looking like a possibility here on Procter & Gamble. So keep an eye on that uh, chart. As you can see, I've placed an alert in there. AMD, I mentioned yesterday, AMD perked up. If anyone caught that trade, congratulations. Perked on up, moving on higher. Whoops, need to go to a daily chart here. Somehow I switched to a two-day. Beautiful, beautiful move here, perked on up 
looking good um, in that move, showing lots and lots of strength. Um, I also mentioned Restoration Hardware yesterday, and Restoration Hardware continues that potential in here to set up. We broke through some resistance. We're holding in this nice trend, and Restoration Hardware with so many people doing um, remodels and things in their homes looking for um, things to do during COVID season. Um, we want to watch that for that potential upside move. Keep a close eye on that. I also want to mention FCX. Now, I have a bias here on FCX uh, because I do own this. I'm up substantially on this trade. But FCX is looking good, and I think there's a good story here for copper with housing being so strong. So keep a close eye on this um, as this metal continues to reach to the upside. Keep keep that one in mind for the next potential entry into the trade. Maybe a little rest, a little consolidation over here to trend is just what the doctor ordered. So keep a close eye on that. Hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and say thank you so much for watching this morning. I truly, truly appreciate it. Remember, if you go to the morning blog, it's going to be foreshortened. There's not going to be much there because of the computer snafu I had this morning. And I also want to remind everyone on Thursday and Friday that there will not be a morning market prep video. I am planning to take some time off. I haven't done that for a long, long time. And so I won't be doing a morning prep video on Thursday and Friday next week as we head into that holiday weekend. So everyone have a wonderful, wonderful day. I wish you great profits and we'll see you all right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Take care everyone.